advertising advice and expectations. Hi, I'm Brian Pombo. Welcome back to Brian J. Pombo Live. I want to talk really on how to apply the principles that we've been talking over this past week. Um, all the last few uh, videos and podcasts I put out had to do with apply uh, had to do with really the basic principles. Now I want to take some of that and apply it and show you how so much comes down to both expectations and tracking. So first off, let's talk about expectations. You have to know what you expect to get off of your advertising. Otherwise, you can't determine whether it was successful or not. I mean, you can just wait and see what happens. But if you're doing anything more than that at all in regards to either advertising or word of mouth or anything else, it, sometimes it's tough to be able to track it and know where one started and the last one ended and to really know if it was worth your effort and money to do it. So I'm going to give you an example. Direct mail is a fun one because it's one of those that really can be tracked and you can really good a good uh, get a good idea as to whether it worked or not. So one of my favorite things to send out is postcards. Here's a postcard. This is from um, a, a local lady uh, who's doing real estate. And I don't get that many real estate uh, postcards or letters or anything. Uh, there's hundreds of <laughs> and, and probably close to a thousand uh, real estate people that cover this area. And it's a small area, but there's tons of them. There's I, everyone and their brother is a real estate person, but very few of them advertise directly. Uh, so I'm going to first off give uh, her name is Susie. Give Susie props for putting this out. Now we're going to talk about what worked in this and we're going to talk about what didn't work. But once again, this has to do with expectations, you know, and whether you're tracking it. If you're tracking it and you're getting back more then it was necessary to be able to constitute it working, then you keep doing it. You find a way to keep getting it out there or get it out to a broader audience or what have you. I don't know why I was placed on the list, but here it says, thinking of selling your home. Okay, so there's the headline. It's not super clear. I'm not sure if you can read it from where you're at. It's not super bold. White on a dark background doesn't do as well as a dark color or black on a light background. Uh, this is a little picture of a, a little picture of a teacup and a uh, some flowers. And I, there's not a chair, but there is a little watermark symbol. Um, I just happen to know that I believe this is Dreamtime, uh, uh, the website uh, that you can purchase. And if you don't purchase it, their watermark stays on there. So that's that doesn't look that hot. I'm just noticing it now for the first time. I didn't notice it the first time. Not that that's going to de deter whether people uh, are interested or not, but it doesn't say anything about a home. I mean, obviously this is on the inside of a home, but besides that, uh, and it's a little a little beat up. It, it, one of the letters fell off here, but it says call for your complimentary market analysis. So that's the basic pitch. That's what they're that's what they're going for. They want you to make a phone call. See what your home is worth today, John L. Scott Real Estate. So this is the main side, and then you've got the address side and the rest of the copy here, which is interesting. It says, if selling your home is on your mind or you just want to know its current value, I would be happy to help. I believe in old-fashioned customer service. Call me to receive your no-obligation market analysis. 5416, and her phone number, uh, <laughs> Susie uh, uh, Matney, uh, PC, broker, owner, uh, licensed in the state of Oregon, her phone number, and her website. There she is right there. Uh, and then it says something about, you know, some offices are independently uh, owned and operated. If your home's currently listed with another broker, please disregard this letter. All this type of thing that you probably have to do uh, legally if not ethically. Um, so pretty typical. You got a typical picture, name of the uh, real estate company, and that's it. It's a very straightforward pitch. Uh, and and let, let me 
talk about what works here. What does work is she's got a call to action. She's got more than one way to contact her. If you don't want to use a phone, you go to her website and it goes specifically to her, not just someone else uh, at the real estate office, which is good. Um, and I didn't go to the website to see what the, the what the presentation is there. That can matter too. You got to make sure you are asking for something very specific. But this is specifically asking for people who want to sell their home. Now, what are the chances that she's going to get my business versus all the other people that never asked me if I was interested in selling my home? If she caught me on the day or week, this might perk my interest if I paid attention to it long enough. There's not a whole lot drawing you in here. It's a pretty boring, pretty straightforward, there's n there's no glitz or glamour, but maybe that's all that's needed. Once again, expectations come to, does this produce the results? Is she getting people contacting her because of this piece? Or does she have to send out multiple amounts to be able to build up familiarity? Because this is the first time I remember seeing her. Now, maybe we've met. I apologize if that were the case. But this is the first time I recall seeing her in regards to real estate and selling homes uh, there's a lot of things you could do you could do you could have a little bit more of standout pictures it could be it could stand to be a little uglier honestly i mean if it were more ugly more bold um, you will get more attention that way uh, if you offered something for free to to uh, be able to i mean seeing what your home was worth for the most part i would think that most people would know that you'd be able to look online to get a lot of estimates like that. Now maybe they don't, and maybe this works great. Once again, it comes down to expectations, your tracking, and what are the results are what you want them to. What I would test against this is maybe a little bit more to the offer. Maybe uh, offer, you know, uh, see all the, I, off the top of my head, I, I can't come up with an offer right off the top, but there's, so many more different ways of doing this. This is very bland, but don't throw off bland. Bland may get the job done. That's the real question in the end is whether it gets the job done and what you expect back from it and whether you're planning to do more than just one. So I'll let you know if we see more uh, from Susie. Susie, I recommend continuing your direct mail out there to the community because you're one of the only ones that I've seen this certainly in the last few years so hopefully that's helpful to you in kind of taking some of those principles that we talked about and kind of reverse engineering them based on a piece of advertising that we saw hey I want to also recommend my book nine ways to Amazon proof your business if you have a business if you're a business owner or an executive in charge and you want to make things completely competition proof is my book. You uh, go get yourself a copy off amazon.com or anywhere books are sold or you can get a free copy at amazonproofbook.com. amazonproofbook.com. We'll be back here tomorrow night. In the meantime, get out there and let the magic happen.